Hi everybody, Dr. Eric Cobb back with you this week. I want to talk to you about carpal tunnel syndrome. One of the most common questions that we get in our info account, people calling the office is, is, hey, you know, I'm having some problems with my hands. Is there something that you can tell me to do that will help? Now, this is something that I consider very, very important for a couple different reasons. If you have any kind of issues with your hands, what normally follows that, if you begin to lose grip strength particularly, is that your total activity level tends to go down. And if you look at the research on this, we see this kind of throughout the lifespan. As people get older, they begin to have more trouble with their hands, their hands get weaker. That prevents them from participating in other activities, working in the yard, working in the house, participating in exercise. And so personally, what I've seen is that pe as people lose hand function, we see a general decline in health. And as I said, this is not just personal experience, it's borne out in the research. So what we want to show you today are a couple of exercises that you can use to improve your grip strength, and if you happen to suffer from any kind of pain or dysfunction from what's called like carpal tunnel syndrome or other hand and wrist problems, these exercises can be a lifesaver. So I just want to show them to you. Now obviously, since I'm not there observing you and examining you, if you have problems in this area, you want to make sure that you clear these exercises with your doctor or healthcare provider before you play with them. But I'm going to show you how to do them in a very safe and simple way. And remember, like I said, our goal here is to decrease wrist and hand strain and improve our grip strength. So if you even want to test this, you can try opening a jar or something, see how that feels, do the exercises, and then try it again, see if you notice a difference. In most cases, you should notice not just a small one, but actually quite a large one. All right? So here's how this works. Lots of people give out wrist stretches and other things for carpal tunnel syndrome and other repetitive stress injuries in the hands. But what I want to focus on, because this is a Z-Health focus, are the nerves that actually feed the hands. If you're not familiar with this, you have nerves that leave this area of your neck, they travel down your arm, through your forearm, down into your hand and fingers. Now the issue that can arise is that if you've had a neck injury, maybe a whiplash, if you've had a shoulder injury, you've taken a bad fall and injured your elbow or wrist, the nerve that feeds the hand can become entrapped under muscle or ligament or some kind of other tissue, and as a result, not do a good job of feeding the muscles uh, of the hand. So we're going to show you a couple of exercises that are designed to, we call it floss the nerve or uh, mobilize the nerve through these tissues. We're, as I said, we're going to do it in a real gentle way. So what I want you to start off with is thinking about an intensity scale of 1 to 10. 1 being I, I don't feel anything at all. 10 being this is really, really significant and severe. Um, because what we want to do with these exercises, because nerves tend to be sensitive, is I want you to keep the intensity at 3 or below. All right, so remember that, three or below. We're taking this really, really easy. So the first exercise that we're gonna do is for the nerve that feeds your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger. And this is the median nerve, and this is the one that's typically compromised if you have had or ever uh, been told that you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Here's how the exercise works. We're gonna stand in good posture, make sure that we have a nice lengthened spine, and we're gonna work on this arm. So you're gonna let the arm hang by your side. The first movement is going to be to spread the fingers. The second movement is to pull the fingers back. So if my palm's facing the wall behind me, I'm going to lift my fingers up toward the ceiling. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my shoulder out. So I'm going to turn my fingers to the outside. Now as I do that, you may already be getting a little bit of a tingling feeling into your hand. And if you are, you don't have to go through the rest of the exercise. You can stop right there. All right? So to repeat, spread the fingers, pull the fingers up to the ceiling, Turn the hand out. We want to make sure that our elbow is now locked straight. Now we're going to slowly lift the arm out to the side. That's going to intensify the stretch. You're then going to pull the shoulder blade down slightly and tilt the head away slightly. Now, in this position, you should be getting quite a lot of tension in the nerve, and you'll be able to feel it. At this point, we want to do the mobilization, so we're going to do three different things. The first thing is we're going to raise our shoulder blade. That should take the tension off. We're then going to pull our shoulder blade back down puts the tension back on. We're going to do that three times. One, two, and three. Now, we're going to hold the shoulder blade down. We're going to bend the elbow. Take the tension off. Straighten the elbow. Bend, straighten, bend, straighten. Finally, we're going to hold everything in that kind of stretch position, and we're going to bend our wrist forward, pull our wrist back, forward, back. Last one, forward, and back, and relax and shake that out. Now, please remember, you have to keep the intensity low. Every subsequent position that we add in intensifies the mobilization on the nerve. So if you're able to just stand upright, spread your fingers and pull your fingers up toward the ceiling, and you already feel some mobilization occurring, that little tingling feeling, 
like I said, stop there and just do the same small motions to mobilize the nerve in this position. All right, so that's gonna be exercise number one. Exercise number two is for your little finger and your ring finger, all right? And this is called the ulnar nerve, and it passes right through here, and it's known as the funny bone nerve if you ever hit your elbow. So here's how we're gonna mobilize that one. It starts exactly the same way, nice tall spine, good neck position. From here, begins exactly the same, my arms hanging down, I'm gonna spread my fingers, I'm gonna pull my fingers up to the ceiling. Here's where it begins to get different. Now I'm going to bend my elbow, and I'm gonna bend it and keep it fairly tight. I'm gonna raise my arm until my upper arm is parallel to the floor. I'm then going to roll my arm out to the side. Now from here, a couple of important things are gonna happen. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna rotate it forward. Normally when I rotate it forward, you'll begin feeling that little tingling sensation in the little finger. You're then gonna pull the shoulder blade down, gentle head tilt away. This is the full setup for the exercise. Now the way that we're going to mobilize the nerve is really simple. We're going to rotate the thumb back, rotate it forward. So we'll do that three times. We have to hold everything else just as it is. We're then going to go to our wrist. We'll bend the wrist forward, pull it back, forward, back, forward and back. And then the last one, we're going to do our shoulder blade. We're going to raise our shoulder blade. That should take the tension off. Drop our shoulder blade. Tension on. Do that two more times. And shake it out. Now. If you're moving relatively comfortably at a comfortable pace, this should take you about 30 seconds to do both. Um, the median nerve and ulnar nerve on one hand, 30 seconds on the other hand. My recommendation is that you test this. As I said, test your grip strength, see how your hands feel. If you have any kind of pain or discomfort, see how it responds to that. If you get a good benefit from this, plan to do these exercises two or three times a day, particularly if you are encased in a cubicle each day, spending a ton of time typing, working on uh, fine motor stuff on a phone or whatever, it is a potential lifesaver, um, not just in terms of pain, but also, as I said, in activity and exercise as you get older. So that's uh, our first look into carpal tunnel and grip strength. Next week, I'm gonna take you through another exercise that's much more unusual. Most people, when they focus on the hands, focus on the muscles that do this. We also have to focus on the muscles that open the hand, and that's what we'll get into next week. Thanks.